instantaneous rate of change. So hopefully you remember from the previous lesson that when we talk about average rate of change, we're talking about like the big picture, what's happening at the beginning, what's happening at the end, and then you average it out. Um, but for instantaneous rate of change, you're looking at what's happening at a specific moment, okay, at one moment in time, as opposed to a comparison of, uh, of beginning and end. So some examples I've written here is how far, how fast is the car going right now? How fast is the oil spreading two hours after the accident, accident took place? Okay. How fast is your body metabolizing a drug three hours after you've consumed it? Okay. So if you were to imagine the graph, um, we're not going to look at the slope of the C line. Okay. So we are actually, because it's only at one moment in time, we're looking at the slope of a tangent line. And finding the slope of the tangent line is a little tricky because like I said, you only have one point. You don't have two points. If you have two points, use the slope formula you had in grade 10, or uh, sorry, grade nine. But because you only have one point, how can you find the slope? So um, you can watch the animation I, I, I uh, set up for you and then we'll come back to this. So in this animation, what we're going to try to do is approximate the slope of the tangent line uh, at x equals 2. So the red line here is our secant. The green line here is our tangent. And the blue is our graph uh, of the function f of x equals x squared. So I actually cheated a little bit, and uh, I know that, like I said, the green is the tangent line, and I know that the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2 is 4. Now, usually this green line isn't here, okay? But uh, for this animation, I'm gonna use the green line and try to help us uh, devise a strategy on how to approximate the slope of the tangent line. So like I said, this green line is usually not here, but for this animation, we're gonna use it to help us out. So I'm going to move point A closer to point B. And what I want you to do is focus on the secant and see how it compares to the tangent. Okay, so uh, let's move point A. Okay, wow. So you know what, I'm gonna do that one more time. And once again, focus on the secant and compare it with the tangent line. So I'm gonna drag it this time. So right now, you can make the argument that the secant is very different from the tangent line. But hopefully you've noticed, as you bring point A closer and closer and closer and closer to point B, the secant line becomes a better and better and better approximation of the tangent line. Now, be careful. The two lines are not the same. But what I am saying is, the secant line becomes a better and better approximation. They're almost the same. In fact, let's see. Wow, if I make them you know, pretty close to one another, you'll see that the red and green line, the secant and tangent line, are pretty much uh, the same. Okay, Not the same, but very close to being the same. And I also want to add the fact that, yes, you can take A and approach B from the left side, but what you can also do is take A and approach B from the right-hand side, and the effect will still be the same, okay? The secant line will quite simply become a better and better approximation of the tangent line, okay? And that's the strategy we're going to use uh, in this lesson. We're gonna try to solve uh, for the slopes of the secant lines when A is close to B, and I use that very loosely uh, because close is not a very, uh, very mathematical way of expressing things because how close is close? But we're gonna have our guidelines uh, in the lesson. But the, the idea is we're gonna bring point A closer to point B and using the slopes of the secant lines to help us approximate the slope of the tangent line at any given value of x. Okay, so hopefully the animation was uh, pretty helpful, uh, but now you should be able to find the slope of the tangent line. And what we're going to do is 
use the secant to help us approximate the slope of the tangent line. So given the function y equals 3x squared, estimate the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. So like the animation I showed you, you can approach 2 from the left side and you can approach 2 from the right side. So for the first example, we're going to approach 2 from the left side. And we have a standard here. We have a we have a standard here of how to approach 2 from the left hand side. So I'm going to write it down first and then I'll explain that. So I said in the animation there's a drawback because we said that when the two points get close, but how close is close? Can we all agree on what close means? Well, for our class, we're going to set this to be our standard. We're going to make the points one tenth away from each other, and then one hundredth away from each other, and then one thousandth away from each other. So as you can tell, we're getting closer and closer and closer. And this is the definition. So delta x is 0 0.1, one tenth, and then one hundredth, and then one thousandth. So in this case, we're approaching from the left hand side. Now, if you approach from the right hand side, the separation of the points will still be the same, okay? Except for the fact you're approaching from the right hand side. But it'll still be one tenth, one hundredth, and one thousandth. For the next example, we'll approach from the, the right hand side. Okay, so what we're gonna do is find the slope of the secants. So there's three secants, okay? And then we're going to hopefully see a pattern here. So y equals 3x squared. Hmm, okay, so delta y, so you're going to evaluate at 2 and evaluate 1.9. So let's see. One 1.17. Okay, so that would be 11.7, right? Change in y over change in x. And then let's do 1.99, 11.7, 11 oh sorry, 0 0.1197, which means this is 11.97. And then uh, if you do this one, it should be 0. Point, uh, you know what, let's just do it. I have an idea what it is, but Let's just make sure. 0 0.011997. Okay. So this would give you 11.997. So I hope that this table isn't really uh, too confusing, but to, to summarize it very uh, succinctly, all you're really doing is you're performing the secant calculation that you learn in the previous lesson. You're finding the average rate of change three times. But uh, these values are going to be very, very useful because it's a, you can see a trend, okay? This trend is helping us approximate the slope of the tangent line at x equals two. So using the secant lines, like we saw in the animation, it will help us approximate the slope of the tangent line. So we 11.7, is the slope of the tangent, uh, secant, sorry, 11.97, and 11.997. So hopefully you can see that the pattern uh, that these valley, these slopes are showing you is that the approximate slope of the tangent line at x equals two is, a, is we're gonna go with, hopefully we can agree, 12, right? So some, some people argue, well, why don't you just do one single calculation here? Yes, I guess you can um, to do one calculation and just um, write down a number that's very, very close to this value. But I like to do the calculation three times. Yes, it is time consuming, but I like to do it three times as opposed to one time because now I can see a pattern. I can see a trend taking place. Okay, yes, it is more tedious, but the only way to see the trend from your secants is if you do the calculation multiple times. If you do it one time, I have no idea what the trend is. Okay, but saying that you can still get a pretty good approximation as we just put two points very close together and find the slope of that secant.
Okay. So now uh, we have y equals x squared minus 2. So we want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4. So, uh, like I said, this time I'm going to approach from the right hand side. So 4, 4.1, 4 to 4.01, and then 4 to 4.001. So delta x will be 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, and 1 thousandth. So like I said, it doesn't matter if you approach from the left side or the right side. Uh, the hour standard would be a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth. So now we have to find delta y. So it would be 4.1. Uh, squared minus 2 minus uh, 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 2 is 14. Let me just quickly make sure that's correct. Uh, 16. Yep, looking good. 0 0.81. And then let's change this to 0 0.01. Okay. And then change it to point oh one oh oh one sorry. All right. So you calculate the slopes of the secant. You get eight point one, eight point oh one, eight point oh oh one. So hopefully you can see the pattern. The secant lines are telling you uh, a pattern. Okay, so 8.1, 8.01, 8.001. So hopefully we can all agree that the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4 is approximately 8. We don't know for sure, but based on the trend, based on the secant lines, um, it, it's really hinting us, hinting to us that the answer is 8. And indeed, actually, you, I actually know the answer is indeed 8. Okay, uh, but that is reserved for um, another course, uh, which hopefully I'll take, uh, MCV. Um, but yeah, that we in this course we're only interested in approximating using the secant line. Okay, um, but yeah, so the homework I'll take up in another video. But we're just finding the instantaneous rate of change for these four functions. I do want to add that. Um, Finding instantaneous rate of change is not reserved for polynomial functions. So the examples I did are polynomial functions, um, but you can easily find the instantaneous rate of change for any function using what we just did. Um, so yeah, um, we put it in this unit, but really you can put it in any other unit of this course when we talk about any other function.